another stair step, come forward another stair step. Once we come all the way out here, then we go next door and pull it out of the back end and restart a pile over there using this material again. So we use a lot of extra carbon um, because of the sloppiness of this material. And, um, and we go through two cycles in order to use all the carbon up. We've gone through three before. Dan and I have this running feud about three. I like three because it really gets it down to humus. But three sometimes, it's so decomposed, sometimes not enough carbon left to really do the job. It's an interesting yucky spot. So, um, so I'm fine with, with the two. It's okay. What's the time cycle? The time cycle. So it'll, it'll take us... Uh, it'll take us, goodness, um, you know, three months, uh, two or three months to build this out. And so the first stuff is, everything pretty much decomposes to nothing within about 60 days. All right. And so then you, um, so then you could go through another cycle, but we generally don't spread it. It usually is a 12 month kind of cycle start to turn to, to you know to second injection reusing the carbon and, and second injection and then and until it finally gets spread we're not in a hurry it's okay all right so to start you put down about 12 inches of uh, 12 inches of carbon and uh, the 12 inches of carbon is gonna is gonna uh, give you a nice a nice uh, pack and then you keep the edges all pushed up here so it's saucer shaped so we don't have any blowouts because this stuff is pretty uh pretty soupy as they say all right and uh, so we the, the the edges the saucer shape keeps it away from the edge so you don't have a blowout you know where a possum or a raccoon or some vermin is going to going to uh, come into it now, if you guys will step aside enough to let um, Justin come in with the guts, and we'll drop those in and do this. So then, so then we then we'll spread this out on it, and as we do, we'll make sure we're careful to keep our saucer shape. Okay, keep our edges up so we don't have anything blowing out. So on a normal processing day, when you're doing 600 or 500. That's still enough, big enough of an area. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, now obviously, if, if we do, you know, if we do 500 birds, you know, we might come up 12 to 18 inches. Or if we have a cow that dies or a pig, uh, that's often a question. You know, well, what do you do with it? Well, everything goes in here. You, you know, you, you, excuse me. You cut the cow off. Not normally. I'm too lazy. We just dump her right in here, you know, make her make sure her feet are sticking to the inside or whatever. But then, then of course, you're going to put a pile of chips. You know, if the cow is this thick, you know, you want to you want to have her, you want to have that covered up, you know, half half as much as the the uh, thing itself, and she'll just decompose right down to nothing. And of course, whenever I do, whenever I do tours, bones and all. Uh, um, 
Well, yeah, if the cow goes in, her bones go in too. We don't, we don't debone her. <laughs> um, now there was there was one time when we cut when we cut one when we cut them up, and that was several years ago. Uh, some this will be in, a, in another book sometime, uh, and the chapter title will be when nine one one calls you. You know you're in a rough day. No. Nine one one called us, and we'd had a. We had the uh, uh, CXX Railroad had been working on a on a crossing over near one of the farms that we rent, and had not closed the gate, and our cows um, uh, got into a weak spot in the fence, got onto the neighbors. The neighbors was where the crossing was. Nine of them got down on the railroad, and Amtrak ran over nine of them. Fortunately, didn't derail. Nobody was hurt. You know that would have really been exciting, but we had nine dead. Uh, big steers out there on the railroad. They picked them up for us and we brought them home and we took the saws all and whacked them up into pieces so we could stack them. Well, that would have been a lot to, to of course they were already in pieces, some of them. Um, but anyway, it's funny, you know, Kit, of course, you know, when, when, when uh, you know, when eight-year-olds are around here, of course, little boys are always picking around these piles, you know, and they're finding little chicken legs and, you know, different things, and of course, you know, invariably one of them, here comes a head, a cow skull, you know, <laughs> and uh, boy, then, or, or, you know, some jawbone or something, then they're walking around and they got this big trophy carried around all day, you know, and I, I've often wanted to, uh, to get to one of these uh, biology, um, biology, for, for biology teachers, you know, where they have skeletons and different things, and get a human, a plastic human skull, and put it in the edge, and I have one of these eight-year-old kids, and now uh, they go to rooting around this kid, you know, and just see like the eight-year-old boy rolls out a human skull, oh, you know, he freaks out, he has a, oh, Uncle George, I wondered where he went, we missed him for a couple months, you know, and he, he probably been sued for emotional trauma, you know. But, Rodents, possums. Not a problem at all. Not a problem at all. And I think there, there are several reasons. One is, one is that, that it's got some, it's got some confinement around. You know, it's, it, you got to, you got to really want it. And most of those kind of vermin are, are pretty lazy. They're opportunists. You know, they, they, they walk a lot and they just, what can I find? You know, you kind of looking around. And, uh, and, and so the, the wire and the stuff, you know, it, it's a little bit confining. Secondly, there's a lot of heat here. Uh, you dig in here just just a couple of inches, and um, and it's hot. I mean, you know, 140, 150 degrees. So that tends to be a deterrent. Number three, what do you smell? I mean, we're standing here amidst you know thousands of pounds of guts, blood, guts, feathers. You know, I know there's a couple dead pigs. I think there's one dead steer in here a couple weeks ago. When you have a thousand head, you know, you're going to lose one once in a while. And, um, but I can eat lunch in here. Okay. And it's that smell that attracts, you know, they're attracted to the vermin. Uh, the, the, the smell is what's attractive to the vermin. And then beyond that, uh, there's a lot of people here. And uh, these interns and apprentices, they stay up all night. You know, they, they just, they're party animals. They just, they never go to bed. So they're just running around, and a lot of them, um, you know, carry sidearms. This is the Wild West here. We encourage firearms here. So, uh, so you know, uh, vermin is fair game here. And the big dog, Michael, you know, will will uh, pick one up and kill it once in a while. And so there's a lot of a lot of activity going on. But but no, that's not been a problem. And and uh, rats are generally they generally come in with with grain. So the, the pigs are more, the pigs, the pig feeder is actually more attractive to vermin than this is. And, uh, and that's one reason why when we, when we clean out the pig, the pig bedding, you know, sometimes we'll have some, some excitement with some big rats in there with, with uh, the pig bedding. The kind of material here, you can see this is wood chips. There are numerous kinds of material. We prefer the wood, wood chips the best. We've used straw and old hay, but those, those are hard to get. Um, uh, they're not friable, and so you get these blowholes, these, these you know, channels of, of stuff that goes out. And, um, and they, you, just, you just can't, you know, you just can't 
fill all the voids with, with hay and straw and things like that, corn fodder. Sawdust is kind of heavy and um, uh, pretty dense, and so it has a hard time getting enough oxygen and tends to get too hot in fire fang. Uh, of course, also the, the, the carbon is a lot higher in sawdust. It's 500 to 1. Wood chips with some leaves in it are down in the 200 to 1, so you get a much better CN ratio because all, obviously the, the material we're putting in here is primarily nitrogen. Um, and you want a, a CN ratio of about 30 to 1 in order for it to work well. And so we're already struggling with too much carbon because we're using extra carbon because of the sloppiness of the material we're putting in. And, um, and so it, it's, a, it's a little bit dicey. One nice thing about the concrete floor is that we can honestly look at anybody and, and, and there's no leachate. You know, that's always the big leachate, leachate, leachate. And so by having on a concrete floor, it puts us way above board as far as any regulations or any, you know, whatever compliance permits. Um, anybody can come and see, well, there's no juice, you know, and so it's a, it's a very uh, clean situation. Other questions? Anything? Yes? Do you ever have to worry about fire here? I mean, you got, like, heat and fuel. Like, is it ever a concern? No. No. Mm -mm. Okay. No. Do you add any water to this, or is the guts enough moisture? The, the guts, it's pretty sloppy, actually. It's pretty sloppy. And, um, yeah, I mean, this morning was not a fair, I mean, imagine that front loader full of blood and, and just, you know, it's, I mean, normally when you're, when you're doing this kind of final spread out, you know, you have trouble not sinking down into it. You know, it's, 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 it's like walking on whatever, mud, okay? Uh, so it's pretty wet. And then, and then uh, once it, once it kind of cools down, then we go through a second cycle again and do it all over again. You know, uh, probably ideally there'd be a sprinkler on it, you know, once part way through, but, uh, you know, you can refine yourself to where there's just not enough time in the day to do everything. So, so you know, we, we, so we, we are very um, aware that we make a rough compost, but a guy that was handled, did the compost for SureGrow Company, which is an organic uh, uh, fertilizer company, back 30 years ago came down and we were walking around and I was apologizing for our rough compost. Finally, he stopped me about the third time. He said, look, you don't have to apologize for anything. He said, the stuff that we, that we sell, it's all, you know, screened and, and done, you know, we, we moisture control, we temperature control, we turn, we, we inject water, we've got aerators, you know, all this stuff. You know, we're selling to a high-end market for fine soil and stuff that's got to be completely ready to go right now. He said, your stuff's just as good as ours, except the soil has to continue to work on it for a year. Well, what's time to an actinomycetes? You know, he's not in a hurry. And so he said, you don't need to apologize. You're feeding the soil. The soil biology is, is breaking it down and making it look like ours in three times the time. But that's okay. Who needs to be in a hurry? So uh, that really kind of cured me from being embarrassed about rough comp you know look the thing is you don't want your nitrogen to evaporate you want to have a sanitary hygienic way to handle it you want to get a fertilizer benefit out of it and other than that you know if it's a little as long as it'll go through the manure spreader you know who cares and where uh, do you put most of it where do we put most of it out on the fields this we put where we don't mow hay because Cow skulls and things like that don't go very well in a hay barn. But, um, but th this we put where we don't, don't make any hay. There was one other question. Yeah. Uh, well, now, when I was doing this, it was much smaller scale, so I was out there every day. Not, the only time this gets turned is when you move it. The only time it gets turned is when we move it. That's why. Right. So it keeps the yeah, it'll uh, it'll it'll keep a it'll keep a pretty high temperature for you know three months. Yeah, yeah, it does. In fact, some of you I'm sure are aware that some people you know coil up hose and you can put water pipe water hose in here. We did that one time when we used to have it down right by the we used to have it right by where we where we processed chickens and um, then we moved it. But when we did it there one time, we actually did take a bunch of garden hose, coil it up in here. Cold water went in one end. 
140 degree water came out the other end. It was pretty cool.